Hi, this is Charles Kim with Tap into South Brunswick and Cranberry. We're here tonight at the South Brun the Education Foundation of South Brunswick Township Inc.'s Taste of South Brunswick. It's their largest fundraiser of the year for this group that supplements the educational budget in the township. So let's get right to it. We're here with uh, Marty Apschutz from the South Brunswick, the Education Foundation of South Brunswick. Township Inc. <laughs> so tell me, Marty, about, about the event tonight and why this is so important to the foundation. Well, this is our gala. It's our biggest fundraising event of the year. It allows us to generate the funds to give back to the school district. We've given back over $80,000 over the last few years to the school district in the forms of various grants to faculty members and to VTN to do innovative work and to keep our students in the forefront so that we're doing the best we can to educate them using the best methods we can come up with uh, and to essentially to supplement what goes on with the school budget. As you know, over the last 10 years at least, the amount of aid coming from the state has decreased and this allows us to provide money for things that typically are not going to be found in the budget. And of that 80000 you had a presentation Monday night that showed some of the different things. There were some uh, uh, manipulatives that were given to the kids. Uh, uh, one of the teachers uh, was showing uh, blocks that counted to 10 and use that to illustrate the digit blocks. The digit blocks. She used it to illustrate the difference between when the Mets won the World Series last <laughs> and when the Cubs won it last. Right. Um, how important is that to the students of the township to be able to, to use those and be able to get their hands on the well, actual learning? My perception as a non educator that it's is that it's very important. Students have different light learning styles. I mean the whole area of differentiated differentiated education, differentiated education is the area we're talking about that students learn math different ways and that help will help some students the digital blocks will help some students visualize the difference between the, the ones places and the tens places and the hundreds places and that's why it's so important that we have different ways that we can teach the students and that's one of the things that we get joy out of seeing that this money that we've uh, awarded gets used in these interesting ways that help students. I, I've heard tonight from many teachers that the, the faculty is thrilled that they have this opportunity to apply for a grant to do something that they have this idea about teaching things a little bit differently than what the budget may uh, afford them so that it goes above and beyond what the, what the typical, typically in the curriculum or allows them to present the curriculum in a slightly different way and it therefore helps more students. Now, now there are a number of years you also served on the Board of Education. You were president for a few years, right. as was your wife. Right. Um, how much would you have liked to have had something like this at your disposal come budget time during your tenure as on the budget committee? And well, it, it certainly would have been better if we started this 20 years ago instead of just a few short years ago or 40 years ago or 50 years ago. but. We started it and we're doing what we can and we hope to continue to build our brand name as the Education Foundation of South Brunswick and come up with even more innovative ideas and perhaps even bigger events that will allow us to turn more money back to the school district in the form of grants and innovative opportunities for the students to learn in the best ways that we can come up with, it, the best ways that the faculty can come up with. And in addition to this event, what other events do you sponsor during the year? Well, we're actually going to have a new event in, uh, the, at the end of January. We're, we're announcing the murder mystery dessert. It's kind of an interesting idea that will twist on the whole murder mystery uh, event where you have performers come in and do an interactive murder mystery with members of the audience, and we're going to do it as a dessert. And uh, we're, we're going to be running that, running that January 30th, uh, place to be determined yet. Uh, we also have our 
a Tour de South Brunswick, which is our huge bike event that has uh, a, a biking opportunity for students of just about every level, from young children that can do a three mile ride to a four mile ride to a 10 mile ride, and then the older children and adults to do a 25 mile ride. Uh, so that, that's our other big event that we have. That's not as much of a fundraiser as a community event. We've had 600 and 700 students in the last two years, not just students, but community members come to do the event. And uh, this year we're, we're holding that event on uh, May 28th, which is the Saturday of Memorial Day. And we know that it doesn't conflict with baseball and it doesn't conflict with uh, the music department. So we're actually expecting, our, quite a turn, expecting quite a turnout to the event. Well, they had a pretty good turnout this year for that. Yes, we had over 600 this year. And as a and biking then, enthusiast, I know you, you enjoyed taking part in that and oh seeing yeah. all that come together. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, Bobby Binder, who's the vice president of the foundation, and myself are the two co-chairs of that event. And uh, we love it. We love it. And I noticed that when you look at the Board of Trustees, it, it's a pretty good cross-section across the community. You have Captain Jim Ryan from the police department. Right. and um, yeah, uh, Captain Ryan is our newest member on the board. And uh, so what does it mean to have that kind of diversity? I mean, it's not all just the folks centered around education who are showing their commitment to education in this community. Yeah. Well, I, well, certainly I think people that agree to become members of the uh, Education Foundation Board have a commitment to education in this community. And I think for the most part have very deep roots in this community, even if they've only been here 10 years or 15 years or only 20 years. So I think that, that making the commitment with their free time to do this to further the possibility that students will have more opportunities I think shows a very deep commitment and, I, and there are people that have all different uh, viewpoints of how they can help and different skill sets of how they can help and I think that's what makes it a really great board. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Our 9,000 students for whom our best efforts are reserved, thank you. Thank you for being here this night, every night and all year long. Your generosity truly does matter in the life of the child, and I hope you see that and recognize that. Um, you know, in the spring and summer, our leadership team did a lot of thinking and writing and reflecting on uh, what we call the why, W-H-Y. Our, our purpose, uh, what the French call our, our raison d'etre. Why do we rise each day believing in the possibilities of classrooms and children and kids and cognition? And as I was driving here tonight, I was thinking about the two groups that would convene here and what their whys might be. And in the case of the Foundation Board, a remarkably committed, professional, dedicated group of individuals, uh, if I could hazard a guess, their why would be because funding excellence is a real challenge, because we have gifts to give and we give them freely, including leadership, and because we care about children the most. And to the second group that's here tonight, those who heeded their call to join us at this event and give our gifts so freely, I would suggest that your why might be because we care a great deal, perhaps more than most, because we are a community, and because we feel responsible for the education of every child. And that kind of sturdy bedrock commitment demands and deserves from myself and the leadership team that I serve to each of you that your gifts, given so freely and so frequently, will be used efficiently and effectively to help every child reach the best version of themselves. It's the least we can do. This is a remarkable testament to our community. Your presence here tonight and every night means the world to a child. I'm deeply thankful. Have a great night. Michael Dowden. Judge Dowgan uh, is a humble man. He's so humble that he can't even be here tonight. Um, realistic, realistically, what happened was, because he's a judge, he's forbidden by the rules of the court from actually appearing here. But that shouldn't dissuade us from recognizing the outstanding effort that he's had during his lifetime. He was a 1972 graduate. He went on to Colgate, became a lawyer, opened a law practice here, and he's made an impact on lives every day in our community. His law office is right on 130, and he became a municipal court judge in 1999. He's a presiding municipal court judge right now. He makes a difference in our lives and our community members every day, much like yourselves. Uh, I'm humble also to be here to accept it for him, but also because of the people who I stand before. As educators and as a dad, I am always impressed and amazed by what you do with the lives of the people who come your way. Judge Dowden lives out every day from people who come to him at very difficult times. 
and for those efforts and that work, we recognize them tonight as outstanding alumni. Thank you. Alumnus that we're going to recognize is April Gonzalez, and I'd like to call my colleague Bonnie Capes to the microphone. Good evening. Uh, before I recognize April and give a, an introduction for her, I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank all of the restaurants that have come. If we could give them a round of applause. <laughs> And thank you all for coming. So we turn our attention to April Gonzalez. Quiet, understated sometimes, but magnificent. Um, I'm going to refer to April as a true, true, true homegrown tomato. She was raised here in South Brunswick. Well, she moved here in South Brunswick and she attended Cambridge Elementary School. Go Cambridge. Uh, <laughs> She attended Cambridge and went through our school system. How wonderful is it to honor somebody and then for their career to come back and give back to the students. And that's what she's dedicated her life to. Um, she's proud of being a member of the safety patrol. And I can imagine you, April, you were probably <laughs> running the school <laughs> um, and greeting every student as they came in. Just a, lo a lovely personality and you probably made kids' lives better then as their classmate. Um, she worked through and went through middle school and high school here in South Brunswick, right? And um, then she went on to college and she knew she wanted to be an educator. And she earned her English and psychology degree at Montclair State College and returned to South Brunswick High School to be a student teacher. Truly a homegrown tomato. Um, after being a student teacher in the English department, she was hired on to South Brunswick High School to be an English teacher. Um, I also was a student at South Brunswick High School, and I always wanted Mrs. Gonzalez. I just always wanted her. Now, I, I could still use your skills right now, because as a writer, um, I need a little help. Um, and I know that she definitely would have made me a better, a better writer and inspired me. But her presence through the hallways was always just such a wonderful smile. Those of you who are in the, in the room who have worked with her, you know that that's the case. She is very, very positive. Um, Joe, you have a lovely wife because she's always smiling and she's always a wonderful force in, in our schools. And then she went on to the NJXL program and she decided to become, after getting a master's, then she decided to become an administrator in South Brunswick and she was hired as an assistant, well, first, the supervisor of English and um, then social studies at South Brunswick High School and was able to impact so many other educators as well. Um, I knew her as part of the mentoring program when she worked with Dr. Edmonds, um, which was wonderful because I was trained as a mentor from April. <laughs> and then um, she became most recently an assistant principal at South Brunswick High School. April, you've touched our lives in so many ways. You don't even realize how much you've touched our lives. And so when we thought of an outstanding person to receive this alumni award from the Education Foundation, we could not not think of her. What a pride and joy. You truly are a gem of South Brunswick. So thank you for everything you've done, and it's my pleasure to welcome her to the podium. So um, there really are no words to truly um, express my gratitude, uh, but I do have to try, <laughs> and I'll try not to rely too much on, on what I have written. Um, and of course, my husband right now is thinking to himself, no words, you, really? I could go with that. But sorry, Joe, I do have a few words. First, I would like to thank my husband, uh, Joe. He understands that <coughs> educating our students is not a career or even a profession for me. It is my life's work. And he has been there by my side. He has encouraged me on those days that I wanted to do better. He always gave me the courage to believe that I could. So I thank you for that, Joe. I have to thank my four boys who are studying right now or working late. I told them that's where you need to be right now uh, for the times that they came in August to help decorate the classroom. 
lot. And Joe, you remember before power school helping me to calculate grades. So I think there were some chocolate cookies involved with that, but I thank you. I thank you very much. I also would like to thank the Board of Trustees for the Education Foundation and the Committee for a Taste of Education. Um, I'd like to thank you for this honor, but also for all of the hard work that goes into organizing this event. It is a Herculean effort. And what is so wonderful about all of the work that goes into this is that for every minute spent, for every dollar raised, and for every donation made, our students and our teachers gain tenfold. So I, I thank all of you who were part of the organizing and, and uh, putting this all together. A few weeks ago, Nancy, where are you? You know. A few weeks ago, I received an email from Nancy congratulating me as the recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award. And I told Nancy, I read it at 5.30 in the morning with my cup of coffee before I hurried out the door. And I closed up my iPad and I was in shock. And I went to work, did, you know, my stuff. Um, walked classrooms, saw students, came back, opened up the computer to try to respond, and nothing, <laughs> nothing. And I think I did that three times throughout the day. And then finally, in the evening, students had gone home on the buses, the school had quieted down. Finally, I was able to write my thank you and, and my acceptance. And the words that came to me are the following. Awed, honored, appreciative, and grateful. And what occurred to me was that those four words have been exactly what I have felt all my years as a student, then as a teacher, now as an administrator. I am awed, honored, appreciative, and grateful to be in the presence and here, in the presence of wonderful educators, in the presence of a wonderful community, and here in South Brunswick. So any contribution that I have been able to make in these years is only because of the teachers and the mentors who were there for me, because they shared their expertise, because they imparted their wisdom, they took time, and have just contributed so much to me. So. I want to tell you just a little bit of that story. So you have to go back in time, and you have to go farther, because it's kindergarten. <laughs> and I was very shy and timid. And I'm still introverted, but maybe not as shy and not as timid. And I was five, and I was awed by my teacher, Mrs. Thompson. I was awed with her, and I was awed with learning, and she knew I loved the classroom. But she also knew I hated the playground. For me, kids everywhere, everyone playing, I just wanted to be by myself swinging on my swing. But she very patiently, over time, encouraged me to climb up that flying carpet and to play on the slide with my peers. Um, so I learned to appreciate the playground from her and to have a little bit of courage. In fourth grade, Mrs. Clue would not let me remain quiet. And in fact, she shamed me into talking, which was probably exactly what I needed. And although it was uncomfortable, I am deeply grateful for her pushing me because I might not have gone into education if she had not. In high school, teachers, every teacher prepared me for success and I felt honored to be in their classrooms, no day went by without one of them creating in me a sense of awe and wonderment. And Mr. Schultz, I have to name him, who taught English, confirmed my passion for literature and language. So awe, honor, appreciation, gratitude, so much a part of my high school experience. And since my days as a student, I continue to experience that every day I learn things from my colleagues. 
I have to mention Joanne Kirkus as a mentor. And if I start to mention all of my colleagues, I, there's too many. There's just too many. I learn every day, every day from them. So I have said that I returned to South Brunswick gratefully, feeling privileged to be able to uh, kind of try and pay back a portion of the debt that I feel that I owe because my experience here has always been so wonderful. But I think the truth is I returned because I knew I had some more to learn. And I knew that I could continue to learn here in South Brunswick. So I am still in awe, honored, deeply honored, sincerely grateful to be part of South Brunswick Schools, so thank you.